Hey everybody, it's the interview queen Alicia Atu here and I am super psyched to be catching up with TJP. How are you? What's up? Uh, it's been a little while since the winter time. Yes, much last time I saw you, it was like, <laughs> it was December, I believe. December, yeah. So, yeah. How have things been? Um, I mean, pre-apocalypse is good. Uh, yeah. Post-apocalypse, um, I'm still working on my post-apocalyptic outfit, so. Are you? Yeah, I got to put some horns on a helmet and uh, yeah, a few things, but, <laughs> but things have been good. Long, though. Yeah, yeah, things have been good. I mean, have you been keeping yourself busy the last few days? I know a lot of people are really finding it difficult to kind of stay sane. So what have you been doing for that? Well, thankfully, I'm pretty much a square and a shut in anyway. So for me, it's business as usual. Um, I mean, I spend my time doing mostly the same things, playing video games, uh, Watching sports is kind of the real challenge. It's the only hard thing. Thankfully, a few years ago, I built a gym in my house, and it was like the best investment I've ever made. So, well, I can imagine that like really coming yeah, in so handy right the, now. <laughs> all the body guys are crying on social media, and I'm like, the tables have turned. Um, so, you know, for the most part, I, I uh, you know, all I do is just miss the ring. That's it. I mean, how many Sour Patch Kids bags and frozen pizzas have you Holy put down? Holy crap. Yeah. Um, everybody, <laughs> if, I, if I post like workout stuff, people are like, oh my God, what are you doing? And I'm like, if you guys knew the amount of pizza and Sour Patch that I've been devouring, you would totally disapprove. But I've tried to keep it at a minimum. So, Are Sour Patch Kids kind of that go-to when you do need that little cheat on the side and you're like, that's um, the perfect thing? For me, yeah. Because I, I yeah. don't... I I act like I I act like I'm lazy and I eat whatever I want and the truth is I'm not either of those two things. So when when I when I do want to eat something sweet or whatever that's usually my like if I I treat it like I if I only got one thing if the world's going to end tomorrow and now it might so that's my one thing I guess. Yeah. So. so there's been a lot of them a lot of sour patch kids hanging about. Yeah, yeah, there's been, <laughs> been a lot of sour patch. <laughs> well, I know during the last couple of weeks being in quarantine here in Toronto, I've been spending so much time with my dog. Uh, whereas you, on the other hand, you have pigs, so you have to you have to let me know because I remember we were talking at that MLW show I saw you at last, and you're like, "Yeah, I was just chilling with the pigs," and I was like, "Oh my gosh, I forgot that he has pigs." It's really <laughs> it's it's not popular here like at all. I, I think mean, it's, it's more not, so. It's not popular here. It's everybody's <laughs> always. Um, I mean, it started. I feel like I started a craze when I was in WWE. I I remember when people started seeing that I had uh, baby pigs. It it started to become a thing. Like so many of the women's wrestlers started getting pigs, and some people on the crew got pigs and stuff. So then, like I know, like Liv Morgan and uh, Alexa got one. Uh, at, at, like as soon as they saw like that I had one, they 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 jumped on the pig family bandwagon and like, so I kind of started a, a piggy movement, but yeah. <laughs> I mean, how did it get to the point where pigs were the, I guess, pet of choice? I mean, it just isn't something that pops into um, your head too frequently. I think it was just like, I, I was never really a pet person to be honest. And, um, and uh, I just like, I don't really have the energy to like, um, kind of take after like a really energetic pet, I guess you could say. Um, although I'm probably destined to have a wired like Sour Patch eating little kid someday. So that'll probably be a challenge for me. Um, but yeah, I mean, they're just kind of like lazy, frumpy, um, hypoallergenic animals. And they, they have, I think the thing for me was that they have like um, a high intelligence and a high emotional capacity. So it's, it's kind of like having another human around, you know, oh. I can argue with them. You know, right. if it's their favorite TV shows, the Looney Tunes, they sit around on the couch. It's like having kids. So sounds like the life with them. That's people should oh, look at yeah. things more. I'm raising them right. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> now, I have to say, you're one of my favorite people to follow on social media simply because you make me think back every photo to those good old emo days. Um, you quote some of the, <laughs> it's so true, you quote some of the best music. And I remember even writing you off of a MyChem one, like, dude, we have to talk about this. Um, so <laughs> have you always been into that genre of music? Yeah, I mean, I, um, it's so hard for me to talk about music because either I don't know where to begin or I, I well, I'll never stop. Um, and because uh, depending on who I'm talking to, there's a lot I could talk about because it's my my taste is pretty broad. Um, 
But as, I mean, somebody had asked me recently, that's like really what I like. And I feel like if I had to narrow it down, like if I was like stuck only listening to like one or two things, it would probably be like, you know, that like pop punk, emo punk, like screamo type um, genre. And uh, cause I feel like that's, those are all just sub genres of like one encompassing genre that we all like for those of us that are in that pool, that's what we listen to, you know, uh, that or like classic rock, which a lot of, a lot of the former generation is like kind of comes from that, you know? So I've come to find that a lot of people that appreciate say, you know, Zeppelin are into like some of that newer stuff. Like if, if they're the right age, you know, they kind of cross over a little bit. So th those are really the two things that I like a lot. No, absolutely. And I feel like if you really did go through that phase of pop punk or the emo alternative music, a lot of people looked the part. So did you go through that phase as well? Like, did that kind of go hand in oh, hand for you too? Oh, yeah. I yeah. man, like um, posting some of my more like recent throwback, like clips and pictures, I realized like how much hair bleach and like checkered print and things that I was like wearing. Totally. I would I want to like wear them still actually now I, I forgot like how many I guess great looks <laughs> that I used to have even though like I kind of roll my eyes at myself but yeah I mean I had like red mohawks and stuff like I mean I was I was all all in <laughs> yeah I had like the Haley Williams you know scene haircut right, yeah, the, totally yeah, the, those little side bangs and I remember yeah. going in like hey I want my hair cut like this and she's like no offense to Haley Williams, I adore her, but she was like, my hairdresser was like, are you sure? Like, that's really, that's like a <laughs> bit choppy. I was like, just do it like her, please. <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> you, really, you totally invest yourself to wanting to kind of fit into that group because they make you feel like you really did fit in, if that makes sense. Yeah, I, I mean, there was like, there was so much freedom in the way that you could kind of make yourself, you know, like, because I mean, there's, there's uh, obviously like a finite amount of things that, kind of like suit that look you know like like there's there's like a starter kit for that look just like anything yeah. else you know but I think within that starter kit there's so many ways to do it like there's so many different ways to like you know bleach your hair or like you know pattern a studded belt or put on wristbands or just I mean there's a lot of freedom in it you know it's kind of like an alternative to like the hippie fashion movement like it's like anything goes and it was a it was a fun you know way to kind of I don't know just chase independence through through a look you know no absolutely and I feel like it was a good way just to showcase how different you could be like yeah. you know it it was fun I miss it <laughs> I miss going to all those gigs <laughs> now I just try to catch all the reunion gigs or like you'll have the use touring with taking back Sunday like you know those are just oh they bring oh, you I back know. yeah no yeah for sure <laughs> are there any of those gigs you'd really love to see still like who's kind of that one band that you have yet to see in concert that you would just go crazy if you got to you know what's crazy i've never my favorite band ever is blink and i've never seen them live and oh, okay. um they were they had a residency on the west coast in in las vegas uh like last year or a year ago and um, I really, really was trying to make time to go see them. And I got tickets for like the second to last show that they did. But um, my plans for the night on that given day ended up like just going to hell and I never made it to the show. And then they were done with it. And then they, they had ended up not touring after that. I think Travis had like some health stuff and he didn't want to like play for a little bit. Now the world's going to end. And I'm like, man, I, I was going to see my favorite band. Because other than them, like my favorite band ever was like Nirvana. And obviously I'm not going to be seeing Nirvana anytime soon. But yeah, but yeah um, I, I hope that I can I can see because I, I love Blink in any form, um, even like with, you know, with uh, uh, the new setup without Tom and everything. Um, uh, so Blink is one. Uh, uh, I wanted to see uh, the My Chemical Romance uh, oh. one that like the one from recently um some yeah. friends of mine went and saw them and everything um so that that's another one um i mean there, there's a few I, I i would like i would have liked to see simple plan i was yeah. i was really big into simple plan what was their name before simple plan uh oh, i'm not sure else. and i should you know should know because they were they're, they're from they're from your neck of the woods i can't um, remember what it was it'll come to us like as soon as we hang up won't it <laughs> yeah it's <laughs> always so, the yeah, way it works so th those are a few. I remember like one like one of my favorite shows I ever saw was I saw MXPX at um, the local college back like in the day, and Yellow Card opened for them, oh and it was like gosh. 
six months before they won like a Grammy. Nobody knew who Yellow Card was in the audience. Like exactly. only some of us that like had already heard some of their stuff on like LimeWire or whatever knew. And we're like, oh, like they're going to play the Michelle Branch cover and like blah, blah, blah. And like, we're like, oh, we like Yellow Card. And it was like, like six months later, they were like way bigger than MXPX. Like they blew up, but they were opening for them in this little dumpy like college show, like just not Always long away. before that. Yeah. <laughs> Well, no, one thing that's really neat and that surprises me is the fact you actually have time to catch concerts anymore because I remember even like your work ethic, whether it was your time with WWE and then we saw you recently impact, then I shared the locker room with you at MLW, like you were just go, go, go. So have you always had that work ethic or is that something that came at like a certain point where you're like, okay, I really need to dedicate myself to all of this? Uh, I, I kind of always had, I mean, like, um, like recently, it was obviously big news, like for I guess the whole world. Um, Kobe Bryant passed, and Kobe was like a huge, like inspiration to me just for life in general. Because like he was such an imperfect person, and he had so many similarities to like what my life was. You know, he was going to the pros straight from you know his teenage years, and I could you know uh, empathize with that and, and really like un understand and like kind of follow like his lead. So like there's a, and you know, there's a point in his life where he, he made a lot of mistakes, hit rock bottom. I made a lot of mistakes in my life, hit rock bottom. And so, um, he always had this legendary work ethic, you know? Uh, and it's kind of a joke for some people that follow like some of like the impact roster, like the Josh Alexander, also from your neck of the woods. He, uh, he makes fun of me all the time. Cause they'll catch me after, TV tapings in the hotel, like working out at like 3 a.m. or something, and they always joke like I'm like I'm their Kobe or something. But it's just that is kind of part of me. I undersell it a lot. I like to brag about being lazy because it it's funny, and I don't like to throw it in people's faces like uh, like I have a work ethic. But a lot of times, like sometimes I'm the bane of my travel partner's existence because they'll want to <laughs> relax or chill out, and I'm like sneaking out of the hotel room at like 3 a.m. to run the stairs or do something like. Um, but, you know, and just you just kind of get in where you fit in. So, yeah, I mean, if I find time to go to a show or just to do something, I'll, I'll do my best to do that. And then, um, but yeah, I mean, just trying to make it all work. And speaking to those more lazy moments that everyone does like to enjoy once in a while, how do you spend those? I know you mentioned video games earlier, and I know uh, that you're super into those, but. Uh, I mean, I like, I like video games, obviously. It's, uh, <laughs> I, I, it's always uh, joked with me that I'm, wholesome um so uh but yeah i mean i don't really uh i'll i'll you know party with the guys or whatever like wingman for somebody just but I, that's more of like a protector in me like I, I don't i don't think that i'm straight edge but i don't drink or or smoke or do anything um but i don't have a belief against it so i don't really party that hard or anything uh i'm the same way <laughs> and I, I, I'm really good at mellowing out at home, you know, I, I just, I'm, I'm pretty, I'm pretty, uh, pretty basic, I guess. I like video games. I like sports. Sports are hard to come by nowadays, <laughs> but, uh, you know, that's pretty much it. You know, I like watching some nerdy movies every now and then. I'm pretty easy. Easy going sometimes the best way to go, especially when you're on the road so frequently, like when you don't have any time to actually decompress. Yeah. Like my favorite thing my favorite thing's coming home and just playing Gallagher or binge watching a documentary. Like it's right, yeah. It's the little things. I binge watched one last night. It was the most depressing thing I've ever seen in my life. I never want to do uh, it again. What'd you watch? <laughs> oh, the the Tiger King thing on uh, Netflix. Isn't that like one of the most bizarre things you've ever watched? Oh well, <laughs> having having lived in Florida for a little while, I wasn't surprised by the type of people that were in it. Okay. But it's depressing to see them interact. I actually felt less depressed when it became about like murder plots. Out. Right. <laughs> like when tragedy struck, I was cheered up by it, but watching them just interact in their day to day was depressing. I couldn't handle it. I was like, oh my God, I can't, wow. I, I couldn't stand it. Well, I, uh, I started. I started a couple of days back, and I was like, "Oh, this sounds prom like this sounds cool." And then I was like, "Oh, it's about uh, big cats, polygamy, and murder." All right, like, <laughs> like give it a go. Oh man, and the polygamy is one of the the d most depressing parts of it. Oh my god. So yeah, now now I'm like trying to be careful about what the next binge is going to be because it, that one kind of struck fear in my <laughs> in my heart and my viewing mind. 
Well, I hope you're able to find something a little bit lighter. I just want to say thank you so much <laughs> for uh, coming on here, for catching up. Um, I know everyone's been chilling out a little bit, but time's still, you know, pretty important and precious. So thank you for spending a little bit over here. Oh, thank you very much for having me. And I, you know, I hope I brighten people's day with uh, at least some current events since there's not a lot of news to be had. Yeah, absolutely. That's kind of the whole reason I was like, let's start doing more of these Skype interviews because <laughs> one, where else am I going to get content? And two, people well, kind of need something. You're, you are a rare world commodity that is still able to be in demand in a time like this, being able to create content while social distancing. So you, you've become your, your royalty among common people now. Well, I try. Well, I want to say, everybody, <laughs> <laughs> let's give a big thanks to TJP for hanging out. I'm the interview queen, Alicia. A toot. Be sure to check out alishatoot.com for all exclusive interviews and features, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Thank you.